Pierre-Antoine Gatier, thank you so much for coming to New York City and to the Lycée Francais. We're very honored to, uh, to have you here and to be able to ask you questions about the current state of the restoration of Notre Dame and where it's going in the future. Um, thank you. May I start by expressing my deep um, recognition to the Lycée Francais de New York for inviting me and mainly for setting this event dedicated to the restoration of Notre Dame. I mean, it means a lot for us and I think we feel very supported by this organization and the idea of setting this debate about Notre Dame. It was brilliant, and we must also thank Pascal Richard, of the, uh, who heads the Cultural Center, for her wonderful uh, putting together of so many, a varied group of panelists, which will be participating virtually in a dialogue uh, about uh, these, these issues of restoration um, on a very practical level, on a financial level, on a cultural level, on a theoretical level, and will be presenting to the very diverse community that is the Lycée Francais, because the Lycée Francais is not just um, French nationals or French expatriates, but it's also very international, and then it's located in New York City, which is also extremely diverse. So I think it's an interesting cross-section to think about the, the larger impact uh, on the French, but also the world community in terms of world heritage of these, of these issues. I would, I would like to express my gratitude for this invitation and again for organizing this very large debate. I mean, I, I share with you this vision that uh, global understanding is the best way to find the good ideas. I w don't say solution, but the good ideas. Yes. So it's been a year now, almost, since the terrible, tragic uh, fire that everybody thought was apocalyptic <laughs> on April 15th. But since then, there's been a lot of thinking, a lot of planning, a lot of hope, uh, realizing that maybe we could relativize it, you know, that it, there have been other fires and other reconstructions in the past. And so I think this is a very good time to sort of uh, do a resume of the situation and think about where it's going from here. So um, you are an architect of the, uh, in chief of the Monument Historique, which means uh, that you um, are responsible for several regions in, in France and also in Rome, the French buildings in Rome, and specific buildings. And your um, past history is particularly in being specialized in roof structures in uh, the region of ba Marne. Uh, so um, it, it is really fantastic that we can ask you. My first question that I wanted to ask you is, what is the current state of the restoration? How is the roof structure um, faring? Mm. So that terrible night with the fire, all the timber frame structure has disappeared. Almost all the structure. So this is a terrible loss. Um, the frame structure and the roofing materials, which was lead. The famous spire has collapsed so we lost a lot. Um, when the spire redesigned by Violet Duc fell down, uh, it created uh, a terrible disaster and some vaults were affected. So now the situation, it means that we, as Service des Monuments Historiques, we had to deal with a cathedral without roof. Um, so my colleagues who are in charge of this monument, Philippe Villeneuve, um, with two other architects in chief, um, Pascal Prunet and Rémi Fromont, they have done a lot. I mean, it's um, teamwork uh, with architects, engineer, um, all the members of the communities autour de l'archevêque 
de Paris. Um, so what have been done? First, to create uh, a space which is a safe area. So closing the area around the cathedral. Then try to protect the cathedral. Uh, so a uh, non-permanent roof has been created over the cathedral, all the surface of the cathedral. Then there is the issue of the stability. So all the buttresses had to be reinforced. So the situation now, um, the process is to stabilize the cathedral, create this protection against the rain, and create structures, wood, non-permanent structure, that will recreate the global stability of the cathedral. It appeared to be a very long, delicate, a very sophisticated work to be done. And this is it. Um, I understand that there were predictions that it could be completed by April or, or June, but that there have been difficulties removing the, the prior scaffolding that was sort of fused to the um, stone at the crossing. And then there was also a lot of issues about safety on the work site because of lead poisoning yes. and lead that heated up. Mm. How um, has that been, does that have to be resolved before they move forward? I mean, as you noticed, now there are those two major issues. The previous scaffoldings are re-damaged by the fire. It has to be completely removed. And there is the issue of the lead pollution. Um, these are very new situation. Uh, I think it's the first time then within a uh, process of preservation, a preservation site, we are facing um, those issues at such a scale. Um, so it still has to be resolved. So in other words, it's not stabilized yet? It's almost stabilized. They are almost finishing the consolidation of all the buttresses, so it means that stabilization is on the way. Um, what is very, I will not say fascinating, but I mean, cathedral, when they were built during the medieval ages, they were like workshop, long lasting process, um, where workshop where construction techniques were discovered. Um, so I have the feeling when you are listing those new issues, I mean, we are almost back to the time of the medieval cathedral that were the place where new construction techniques has to be discovered. So now we are discovering techniques, new issues of preservation within a cathedral. So it's kind of coming back to the original times. This is quite a fascinating and very special situation. That does, it sounds very interesting. I wish there was some way that the, uh, I know this is a little bit technical, I'm, 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 uh, but could you give one example of something new that, uh, that has been learned on the restoration work site? I think the y you um, developed the issue of lead pollution. I mean, this is a major issue now. Um, it means that preservation is not something, a world that would be separated by the global situation. So we knew, um, we started in the United States, in France, anywhere, to understand that we had to deal with polluted materials. But 
the beginning was dealing with lead painting, which means material that were developed with the use of lead. Now it's a new step. We are not dealing with the material itself, but the pollution it has created. So what is very, very difficult is you have to understand that with the fire which destructed this original roofing material made with lead, probably all the surfaces uh, could be covered with lead. So we have the lead from the material itself, so we have the lead with uh, urban pollution. So it means that it's not just s um, trying to solve the issue of the stability of Notre Dame, we have to solve the stability of Notre Dame and with the issue of taking, taking care of all the workers that are involved in that right. process. And the people who live in the neighborhood. And it has been also uh, an issue. Uh, what is the impact on the communities, on Ile de la Cité and all the, um, the space around Notre Dame? Oh, okay. And, um, as, as you said before, I'm not in charge of Notre Dame. I'm working on other projects in Paris. Um, for example, the, the repaint, the 20th century, the 20th um, repainting of the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. And what I discover, I mean, what is um, the situation is Notre Dame where new questions are raised, new solutions are found, are used in other big sites. So Notre Dame is saving Notre Dame, but it's turning to be the workshop where the new reality of preservation is being developed. This is, this is so interesting, and this is a theme um, we can get back to uh, also with uh, Mr. Picot, um, because there is a lot of technical um, use uh, of materials like um, motion sensors mm -hmm. to see if there's any movement or scanning, yes. uh, laser scanning and making a sort of virtual model mm -hmm. to see if anything's moved so that they can tell if things are stable. Um, I just need to uh, move along a little bit to the next. So this was sort of, I wanted to ask that question because then I wanted to s ask the question of planning for the next phase. Um, I don't know if it's too early to pronounce what the next phase might be, but I'm wondering if there are different hypotheses, you know, like if the, st if the church is stable, then we will do, we will just remake the original truss roof structure, or um, are you already considering alternative um, plans if, if they need a lighter vault, maybe lighter, more modern materials, you know, because um, the way, the place that leads to is since Ville le Duc was, a, was an architect who was so much about the guts of the building, right, and then how that is expressed in the structure, you know, there's a desire to sort of redo, mm -hmm. right, the, the the medieval part, the 19th century part, and everything all together. Is that possible? Um, I think it's, it's really a question of methodology, and it's a step-by-step -step process. So what is going on now is to complete the stabilization fa phase, and this is almost done. Then we'll start the second phase, which is a diagnostic and in which state of preservation is the cathedral. So it's only after this long methodological second phase that we, the Service des Monuments Historiques will understand with its architect and chef in which condition is now the cathedral. I realize that. So, in fact, the the first phase is just stabilizing, and yes. then there's a diagnostic phase, and then there's building yes. phase after yes. they've diagnosed it. So, okay. So then this is my this is 
So you don't know um, yet. So then my question, building on that, mm -hmm. is um, right after the uh, fire, everybody was just feeling so sad. And President Macron, I think, in trying to sort of revive people's morale, said, we will rebuild it in five years. And it sounded so hopeful, but uh, at the same time, the community reacted to that, saying it's not possible, we, these buildings just take t the time they take. Let's say this is enforced. The five-year deadline is enforced. Is it at all possible, and what are the risks to the building? Um, I think the President Macron uh, made this uh, choice, um, which is a fantastic political decision that saving Notre Dame would be a major uh, project for my country. Um, I think it didn't happen a lot that a historical monument turned to be a national um, objective, a national project. So I think we, I guess, we were all um, convinced that it was the good words. Now, the issue of the time schedule. I think there is the idea that this project has to be a um, major project, the major project. Things have to be the faster it is possible. And I think there is a commitment in five years uh, a mass will be celebrated within the cathedral. I mean, I think this is a spirit which seems to be shared by all the communities involved in the cathedral, Cathedral Notre Dame project. That would be a lovely way of bringing people together. Uh, I think it has to be yeah. a project which unify all those who are supporting the cathedral, uh, the Catholic Church, the service, the Monument Historique, the Parisian, and obviously American friends and friends everywhere. Um, moving out a little bit from the dimension of just the church to the dimension of its urban context. I, I know that you've worked a great deal with um, the architect uh, Dominique Perrault. Um, he is one of the most important architects in France and he has done many building restorations where he intervenes in an old building site, for example, at Versailles. I know you've worked with him at, the, at Chantilly, the Chateau Chantilly. Um, making a project for the stables, the restoration of the famous stables, the Invalide. And, and you're, you just told me you've been, you're working at the Hotel Dieu, um, the hospital that was supposed to heal the body next to Notre Dame that healed the soul. It's very symbolic. And there's a whole project for the Ile de la Cité. Is it called Mission, Mission Ile de la Cité? So how, does that, how has that changed? Because that existed before, that was from um, 2017, um, and uh, now there's, is it continuing and has it changed uh, a little bit with the new, uh, after the, the accident? So I may say that it's probably both, it's continuing and it will be affected by the drama of Notre Dame, but that will be Dominique Perrault, uh, decision, but the question that was raised is in, in one way, uh, the Cité, l'île de la Cité, is the center of Paris. It's a special place, it's history, it's the older part of the city, it has its major monuments, like Notre Dame 
de Paris. But I think there is something very special. The Ile de la Cité has been redesigned almost completely during the 19th century, which create this totally isolated Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. And I think it's part of this redesigning of the urban space around Notre Dame, which create this monument, which is shared by everybody. This is my understanding. So I mean that the Ile de la Cité was totally redesigned in the 19th century. Major buildings were created. L'Hôtel Dieu, for example, the Palais de Justice. So all those buildings are now facing the question of the reuse. Right. So I think what is very clever with Dominique Perrault's vision, it's it should not be just one by one project for each monument. They all have to be unified by a global understanding and global project. And I think it's probably the future of what should be done for Ile de la Cité, a, a global vision. And, how, and, and that will actually modify a great deal Notre Dame. So we have a tradition, and then we have a sort of urbanistic innovation. It's very inter very interesting. I think I think we might have to wrap up. Our is there anything else you would you'd like to say before? Uh, may I may I say a word on again on Dominique Perrault project? I think one of the the question which raises uh, the the issue of the future of Notre Dame. What, i what is the question? What will be the. Um, what kind of decision we will make about um, historical answers or contemporary answers? And I think what is interesting with the vision of Dominique Perrault is that probably the contemporary answers could be in that global re understanding of Ile de la Cite. And Notre Dame will be restored to its Gothic and its 19th century. Um, this decision is not already uh, made. Right. So I'm quite comfortable with the idea that it is a long process. It's um, decisions that are coming one by one. So if I could repeat myself, first to stabilize, then the diagnostic, then after this diagnostic is made, what has to be repaired, what is to be preserved. And in that moment, we'll start the issue of what kind of project for the recreation of this fantastic roof timber frame structure and your little duke spire. So I think it's, it needs time. Right. I feel. I understand. Well, thank you so much for coming to New York and sharing this with us. And, and our community will be watching and with great interest in visiting Paris and uh, seeing the work as it progresses and hopefully going to that first mass in five years. So th thank you again. I think we all have been very devastated by the fire of Notre Dame and feeling this support, I mean, means a lot for all of us. And so thank you for the Lycée Francais, the American friends, um, French community in New York, all those who love Notre Dame for bringing their support. So thank you so much. Of course. Thank you for coming.